Hello, I'm Dr. Vita Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. If that sounds good to you, please give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell because we will be doing weekly teaching. So today's video is all about Kylie skincare and is it suitable for skin of colour? Now, first of all, just to set the tone, I definitely want to compliment Kylie just on being able to do this at such a young age. I feel like it teaches our daughters that they can dream big and they can achieve those goals. So I do feel like she's a great role model in that sense. But let's break down her skincare routine and see which bits I recommend and which bits are maybe a no. So I'm going to show you guys my everyday skincare routine and just talk about my products a little more. Start with my face wash. Probably my favorite product in the line. It just makes my face feel so clean and it also retains your natural moisture in your face. So you really only need one pump. It goes a long way. So super foamy. I went through a lot of samples to get the perfect amount of just foaminess and creaminess. The scent is amazing and so refreshing. And the thing about this face wash is it doesn't strip your face. Sometimes when I use other face washes, after my face will feel super dry and like it just took... <laughs> I just love how she talks. <laughs> It's so creamy. <laughs> okay, so why is it so creamy? Well, first of all, the good news is it has no sulfates in it, so it's not going to strip the skin. And that's what she's talking about when she says she uses other face washers that can sometimes make her skin feel dry is because of the sulfates. So she doesn't use sulfates, which is actually really good when it comes to her face wash. So the reason it's foaming so much is because of the third ingredient, which is Cocomido Propel. Now, this can be quite irritating and it is the third ingredient. In addition, she's also got fragrance in it at two to three percent, which means that anyone with any skin issues, that can be right from rashes to dry skin to eczema to acne prone skin, it can exacerbate that issue and so I think this is fine when you've got young skin that's healthy and you have no other issues um, then great go for it um, however if you have anything else going on with your skin I probably wouldn't recommend it and also at the price point it's $24 for 149 mils now the cheaper option is the CeraVe foaming cleanser which is 99% the same actives, the same ingredient list, um, but without the fragrance. Um, and that is only costing £3.16 for 149ml compared to £19.36 for 149ml of Kylie's Foaming Cleanser. So based on price point, based on foamy ingredient and fragrance, this one's a uh, probable no, but it's not so bad for you. You know, I'm not going to bash it too much. <laughs> this almost brings your face back to life. It's a very unique face wash. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pat my face, not wipe, because I used to really dry my face really harsh. Now we're just gonna be gentle with our faces, ladies. Oh. Now I'm gonna go in with my walnut face scrub. I actually wrote all of these descriptions on the back, handwritten by Kylie. Our gentle yet effective walnut exfoliator is essential for achieving a fresh face. It is packed with a cocktail of anti-inflammatory ingredients and skin smoothing fruit extracts that buff away dead skin cells to reveal a soft, radiant complexion. Scrubs can be kind of harsh on your skin when you just put it on dry. So I'm gonna wet my face a little. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit and put it on my face. I'm gonna rub mainly like around my nose. I'm gonna avoid the delicate skin around my eyes. It smells. Okay, first of all, I don't really know how she's washing her face with all those feathers. I mean, <laughs> well done, number one. 
At number two, this walnut scrub. Okay, so look at this ingredients list. I actually like everything on the ingredients list except the walnuts. The problem is walnuts have very sharp edges and they're all different sizes, which means that you are going to get micro tears. And micro tears on skin of color equals hyperpigmentation. So it's just is such a shame, actually. I wish she'd used anything except walnuts. I'm glad that she did no fragrance. I think that's brilliant. Um, the other thing that I found quite interesting is she said that it's packed with anti-inflammatories. From what I can see, the only anti-inflammatory is allantoin, and that's being used at less than 1% because it's below phenoxyethanol on the ingredients list. So that must mean that it's less than 1%. And to be honest, for something like this, uh, for such a harsh scrub, I would definitely be using at least 2%. Ladies and gentlemen, I like to use it two to three times a week, even if you do it once a week, like after the week to just like remove dead skin cells. It really is the secret recipe to soft, delicious skin. I don't know why she talks about face like it's cake, <laughs> like soft, delicious. <laughs> okay, look, first of all, we know we should not be exfoliating our skin three times a week. Oh my goodness, please. That's a bad idea. I think definitely maximum once a week with a gentle exfoliator. Um, and I feel like the secret to her delicious skin is that she's 20 years old. At 20 years old, you have your peak elastin, collagen, your GAGs, your glucosaminoglycans. Every year from 20 years old onwards, you lose 1% of your collagen in your skin. And so at 36 years old, you look like this. <laughs> So um, I think that's the secret of how her young, youthful skin. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my vanilla milk toner, which smells delicious. It's very fast and easy to use toner. This really helps me um, remove any surviving makeup after my um, foaming face wash. So this really helps just ensure that my face is as clean as possible before I go to sleep. So I'm just gonna do a little dot on a cotton pad. Toner really helps prepare my face for my serum and my moisturizer. So I'm just gonna wipe this all over. Okay, so I actually quite like this product. Um, it has no alcohol in it and it's got no, the, it actually does have fragrance. It's less than 1% the fragrance. Um, so it should be fine. Um, the cons are actually that all of the active ingredients are below the 1% mark. So the antioxidants, the sodium hyaluronate, and all the oil. So therefore it's likely to be not in the therapeutic index. And so you're unlikely to see much benefit from it. An alternative would be the Kiehl's Ultra Face Toner. The first three ingredients are exactly the same, which is water, glycerin, and squalene. And that's 90, that would make it about 96% the same formula as Kylie's. Um, now, I really do not like alcohol in toners or in skincare at all for skin of color or for any skin, to be honest. The reason is it actually removes, strips the skin and it removes essential ingredients needed for the skin to renew itself, to replenish itself. It accelerates aging and any skin condition that's taking place will only be exacerbated and that includes acne. So people tend to wear alcohol in toners if they have oily, acne-prone skin, thinking, oh, that quick drying sensation is helping the skin. The problem is you are actually leading the skin to become more oily because it's regulating itself to do that. Um, so I would avoid alcohol in your toners and in all of skincare. I don't really like toners that have alcohol in them. Um, again, my face feels very stripped away. So this retains your natural moisture and just feels really good and fresh. So after my toner, I'm gonna go in with my vitamin C serum. All you really need to do is apply a single pump. I'm actually gonna go crazy today and do two. And it's for every day. Right when you put it on, it immediately like soaks into your skin. That's what I love about this one. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, so it really helps brighten your complexion. 
Okay, so actually this vitamin C is a very stable formula. The vitamin C is actually the second ingredient in, in the list, which means it's probably at about 10%, which is a good percentage. Um, it's a fat soluble form of vitamin C, which is also good for skin of color. I do think it's a good formula. I just feel like when you have an antioxidant, it works much better in combination rather than as monotherapy, meaning you would want your vitamin C with E or with green tea extract or with a ferulic acid. You generally wouldn't want vitamin C on its own because it oxidizes in the bottle and you don't really get the full effect of it. So um, it's not bad formula and it's not bad for skin of color, but I do think there are better options. So, love this. Then after that, I will use my face moisturizer. I love my face moisturizer because it's not, I don't really like super thin moisturizers. I like to feel lathered and delicious and moisturized. Also, this moisturizer is my base for my makeup right now. This makes my makeup look flawless every single time. I'm just gonna pump. I'm gonna do like, two and a half squirts. This feels, there's no, um, there's no scent in this, so it just smells like all the natural ingredients in here. I learned strong fragrances can be kind of overwhelming, and also when it comes to your face, I feel like you just wanna feel clean and like you're not putting fragrance on your face, so that was kind of important to me to keep everything super light and clean. Your face just looks naturally hydrated. I love putting this on just to leave the house when I'm wearing no makeup. I feel like she really knows how to sell. I mean, just like, She's like, I feel like she's cooking, like baking a cake there. Now let's have a look at this ingredients list. So it is a simple moisturizer that she's selling here. It has a non-irritating ingredient list, which I like, there's no fragrance in it. However, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone with oil oily prone skin because the second ingredient is isopropyl palmitate, which can clog the pores. Um, that's a derivative of coconut oil. So to be honest, if you've got normal skin or dry skin this is a fine moisturizer um however obviously acne prone skin i wouldn't recommend it has changed my life okay so now last definitely not least my eye cream it pretty much is the best recipe for your eyes my sisters taught me at a really young age to wear eye cream i feel like you could start as early as you want it's just a good preventative to keep your under eyes hydrated and moisturized. I designed this with a tip so you never actually have to use your fingers. I love that about this because sometimes I don't wanna put on eye cream at night, it's a lot of work. So this makes it super easy for me. So I'm just gonna squeeze it on here and then apply it right under my eyes. You could definitely cover up a late night partying or even if you just stayed up late and haven't gotten a lot of sleep, this is a quick fix. And voila. Okay, so this eye cream is disappointing to say the least. I mean, it's advertised as vitamin E, C, and caffeine. However, those actives are all less than 1%. That means they are unlikely to be working. This unfortunately is a glorified face cream. That's basically all it is. It's 95% is moisturizers, solvents, and emollients. That is this entire eye cream. So completely steer clear. It's not gonna harm your skin, but not worth it. So um, in conclusion, I'd say it's quite a good skincare range for normal skin, not for oily prone skin. Um, I do think there are better options out there and for the price point, plus you're pay paying duty actually when you're from a different country, mm, maybe a no for me. I hope you found today's helpful. Uh, if you want me to review any other skincare routines, please can you write it in the comment section below. And if there's any products you want me to review, please can you write it below. You know I love to look at ingredients lists and see pick out the ingredients that are good for our skin and not good for skin of color. It is one of my pet passions. <laughs> so please indulge me and uh, write down below what you want me to review next. Thank you.